15 deadliest river monsters of the Amazon. Okay. I don't like that it, there's a there's a Paku in frame. Is this really what we're starting with? These are the deadliest river monsters of the Amazon. I am excited. Oh, this is that one channel with the weird Number animations. 15. Green Anaconda. You knew it was coming. What kind of list makers would we be if the Amazon Honestly, most famous fair enough. wasn't on our list? The green anaconda is an animal that has absolutely earned its reputation as one <laughs> of the most fearsome and deadliest animals in the Amazon River. One Kings. of the most fearsome the and deadly animals. An and this just this lady's just got this creepy ass movie smile and he's like, hi, I like cuddling. <laughs> <laughs> like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Pog Champ. Number 14. Vampire Fish. Legend tells, at one time in his life, Dracula attempted to go vegan. That didn't take, so he instead switched to a pescatarian lifestyle. That didn't really work either, but the- What is he talking about? <laughs> is there really a legend that Dracula went vegan? <laughs> what are you saying? What? Fish he tried to eat, apparently survived and became a vampire. I can't prove it, but that what? totally definitely happened. Luckily for us, the vampire fish is not out looking for blood or seeking to build an army of creatures of the night. Instead, they're just looking to terrify and kill any species it happens to stumble across. And Dracula would approve of that, wouldn't he? Number 13. What? Deadliest river monsters of the Amazon. Luckily, this fish has no interaction with humans. But it's deadly, though, for sure. Giant otter. Bet you never expected what? an otter to be lurking in the murky waters of the Amazon River, huh? The giant otter no, is I also did, one of the world's longest river otters, hence the name. While they mostly tend to eat fish, the giant otter is also known to prey on small anacondas, caimans, crustaceans, and a whole host of other sea creatures. Right. So otters aren't dangerous. Cool. Basically, they'll eat just about anything they can get their hands on, making them one of the deadliest animals lurking in the dark, muddy waters of the Amazon. <sighs> Chances are you to be- It eat a lot. It must be deadly. It have big teeth. It must be deadly. I love the very, like, four-year-old child processing reasoning that has been created for this. It's literally like a small child's thought process. Number 12, Bull Shark. The more you okay. hear about the Amazon, the more horrifying it sounds, right? Yes, believe it or not, the Amazon River has sharks, and one of the most aggressive sharks in the world, too. What a fun time for all those clueless Amazonian animals. Well, the bull shark may look a little unimpressive. I am confused because, like, there were some legit ones. Like, the green anaconda? Yeah, sure, deadly river monster. The bull shark? Sure, deadly river monster. The giant otter? Really? Number 11, River Stingrays. What? By now, you've probably figured out there are a lot of fearsome animals in the Amazon. So what's one more? Freshwater fresh stingrays. stingrays are apparently so frightening that they're one of the most feared animals in all of South America. What? The whole continent. Like most stingrays, the Amazonian species is most known for its barb-tipped stinger, capable of ripping through flesh in a matter of seconds. But as if having your skin sliced isn't bad enough, these predators also release a whole lot of deadly venom so in a way it's like getting killed i guess that's twice. deadly what a treat i guess you can technically be deadly without actually having to like kill things very often it does sound like he's doing it on the fly it sounds like he googled deadly monsters amazon river and is just like reading through a page and just sort of like making shit up as he goes that's on that page number 10 giant leech you don't go what? to the Amazon expecting to see some curious, small little animals. This is a river notorious for having some of the largest and most horrifying predators in the world. The leech begins sucking out the blood before falling off. Even saying it makes your arms go a little weak, right? Before falling off. 
they fill up and then fall off. Even if you never noticed it was there and never did anything about it, it would just fill up and fall off. How is this the deadliest river monster? Number nine, red-bellied piranhas. Anybody with nope. half a brain knows that any kind of piranha is going to be deadly, but the red-bellied piranha is a whole other level of terror. Well, actually, that depends on who you ask, but I think even the most rational person will tell you to be careful. The red Hi, it's me, the rational person who also studies fish. Don't be afraid of piranhas, dude. I'm not going to play the Jeremy Wade clip again, but you know what's going on. Bellied piranha is in many of South America's lakes and rivers, but they're particularly notorious in the Amazon. We've had These this discussion. To hunt in Listen, class, we've, are, we've already talked about this, okay? I shouldn't need to repeat myself. You guys need to be taking notes, okay? Modern scientists like to downplay the piranha's reputation, claiming that the stories of humans being eaten by piranhas are mostly unverified. But mostly does not mean entirely, and these animals are clearly very deadly. Let this be a lesson to all of you Amazonian swimmers. You're on the menu. <laughs> Number eight. Let this be a lesson to all of you Amazonian swimmers. What does he think the overlap is between people who watch his videos and people who swim in the Amazon? And also calling them prey of a piranha is very funny. Right. Paku. No! Really? Dude, Paku are so cute and dumb and innocent. I hate when people demonize things just because they're big and sometimes have teeth. Remember when people were freaked out about Sonic the Hedgehog having human teeth? Well, if you're one of those people, you're not gonna like this. The Paku is a piranha-like fish Look at how that has stupid and slow they are. Like teeth. It's for lack of a better word. Weird. Look at that. That's what you're afraid On of. Paper, the Paku. Dude, that thing couldn't fit my finger in its mouth, let alone anything else on my body. There's nothing to be feared. Sure, it's related to the piranha, but this fish is listed as an. It is eating fucking grapes. <laughs> Deadliest river monsters of the Amazon. As he chews on some grapes. <laughs> or, in some areas of the world, these fish are known as ball cutters due to their habit <laughs> of mistaking um, men's genitals for nuts. Yeah, some unfortunate. Okay, don't go free balling in the Amazon River and you are safe from Paku, if that's even remotely true. Glad we cleared that up. Brazilian swimmers and fishermen lost their nuggets thanks to these things. And those human teeth are fixed <laughs> to some very- I do put their balls in the fish. That didn't happen by accident. They were not swimming in a muddy river bare ass and the Baku came up and bit them off. Some dude was like, yo, I'm gonna put my nuts in this fish's mouth. And the Baku went, oh. And then they told all their friends, they're like, I came out of nowhere. Just be prepared to come back with less than you once had. Number seven. <laughs> Why does he keep saying it like that? We all know that water and electricity don't mix. So the idea of an electric well, they do fish mix, is actually. just inherently dangerous. Water and electricity do mix. They mix incredibly well. That's the problem. It just water transmits electricity really well. Thankfully, so they, there's they only do one mix. species of electric fish in the world. Unfortunately, it's exactly what? as dangerous as you'd expect it to be. The electric eel is native only to one the species of, of electric America, fish in the world. The Amazon. Its body is fine uh, and designed for maximum shock, uh, with all its vital organs found in the body's front 20%. Okay, just to confirm that I'm, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Electric eel, electric catfish and electric rays, even if you're only talking about strongly electric fish. You talk about ones that use electroreception, there's fucking, like, all of the sharks. Yes, they're perfectly capable of generating an intense electric shock underwater. And yes, it will hurt as much as you'd it's think. It's not. Generally okay. speaking, electric yep. eels don't tend to attack humans. However, it's not unheard of. There have been reports of humans drowning after <laughs> suffering a particularly nasty shock from an aggressive Humans whoa, 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 what was you doing there? ...tend to attack humans. However, it's not unheard of. There have been reports <laughs> of humans drowning after... <laughs> and no, the eels are never charged for their for their crimes. Some inappropriate wordplay for you there. All right. I'm sure you're... Shut up. ...buzzing. I need to stop.
Please do. Number six. Just stop. Black Cayman. What? If there had to be one reason people don't want to go swimming yeah, in the fair Amazon, enough, I guess. the Black Cayman may be it. These animals, much like their alligator brethren, are apex predators. They have <laughs> no real predators in their natural habitat. There needs to be a cartoon falling sound on that, on that clip. Marge, add a cartoon falling sound in post when he goes, what? They go, wow. You know what I'm saying? That means if a clueless visitor happens to get too close, they better say goodbye to their foot. Stop! Or Stop putting life. your hand near Apex it. Apex predators are like lawyers or judges. They don't play fair, and they have absolutely no sense of humor. I bet the Cayman <laughs> wouldn't even let you finish a knock-knock joke. Nope. No, no. You know, I think you're right. I bet a Cayman wouldn't, you know, appreciate a knock-knock joke. I think you have a point there, actually, Mr. Lemon. Number five. Paraiba. Okay, so Paraiba? technically really? this one is called the Brachyplatystoma, but it's kind of just not fair to me, your friendly neighborhood voiceover artist, to have to keep saying Brachyplatystoma. So instead of Brachyplatystoma, we're going to call it the Paraiba. Why the Paraiba? Paraiba sounds so cool. Paraiba. Paraiba. Man, fuck English pronunciation of foreign words. Why can't we just say them right? Sounds so much cooler in native language. Anyway, the Brachyplatystoma is so deadly. A pariba man. God, I need to remember that. The pariba is the largest species of all pariba. Amazonian catfish, often known as the freshwater shark. <laughs> so deadly that here stands Jeremy Wade holding it with only him smiling. I mean, then again, Jeremy Wade is clinically insane um, when it comes to dangerous fish, but like. I mean, come on. I spent all that time clearing that up that I could have just called it a freshwater shark. Uh, anyway, this catfish- What is this dude on? He like forgot the script and is like stalling for time because he doesn't want to have to do a second take of the video. So like while he quickly brings up his browser again, he's just saying random things. It's like, oh fuck, if I, if I have to record a second clip and then I'm gonna have to edit them together. Number four. Red tail cat. <laughs> what was that image? We can all relate to post Christmas. Also, I saw a red tail catfish, and I'm angry. Why is there a lemon looking at an orange with a juicer? Number four. And the orange is like, no, please, don't juice me. Red tail catfish. No, I once red tail catfish used to be my favorite fish, and I said that I wanted a red tail catfish as a pet um, to my grandmother, and she was like, they get like really big, right? And I was like, yeah, they get pretty big. And she was like, what if it like tried to eat you? And I was like, oh no, it couldn't, it couldn't eat a fully grown person. It could eat like a baby though. It's like when I have kids, we should put a fence around the pond. <laughs> and she was uh, horrified, but yeah, no, not, not dangerous. The red tailed catfish gets its name from being a catfish with a red tail, but. Wow. The more you know. <laughs> You probably already worked that out. They can reach <laughs> up to five feet or more in length, and weigh up to 180 pounds. Sounds. Oh. <laughs> <It's> making. <laughs> it sounded like the puffer fish video, but better. It just went. <clears throat> <laughs> Number three, Arapaima. Given that it belongs to the nope. bony tongue family of fish, where the low oxygen levels tend to kill other species. The arapaima, however, can breathe air with no problem and can survive up to 24 hours outside of the water. Can breathe air with no problem, like that's a huge advantage. No, it's not that they can breathe air with no problem, it's that they can only breathe air. And the reason that they're going extinct is because they have to come to the top of the water to get air and humans are like, yo, arapaima, and then just fucking catch him and kill him. But that's not why it's dangerous. How this 10 foot long fish eats is dangerous. When they open their huge mouths, they create a vacuum, pulling in all nearby food. They're Literally every fish does that. <laughs> like almost every fish suctions in water. That's like how fish's protrusible jaws work. That is not an arapaima thing. And come on. Nobody wants to find a fish with multiple teeth. Absolutely not. No one wants to find a fish with multiple teeth. How often do you find fish with just one tooth? 
<laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a fish with just one tooth. A tooth fish? Okay. Teethed fish? Holy fuck, get that away from me. <laughs> Number two. Gooch. Gooch. Much <laughs> Goonch also used to be my favorite catfish. I love Goonch. Goonch definitely ate people. The Paraiba, the Parara, probably didn't eat people. The Goonch for sure snacked on some dudes. I am 100% sure that the Goonch has eaten dozens of people. So I'll go with fair enough. Like the Gruffalo and other sinister storybook beasts, the Goonch is just as terrifying as it sounds. Mostly because so little is known about it. But what we do- Did you say just as terrifying as it sounds? Yeah, Goonch really strikes fear into the hearts of the people. <laughs> it just sounds like a euphemism for vagina. <laughs> Goonch. All about this mysterious fish is enough to know that we really shouldn't be underestimating it. Part of the reason that the Goonch is such a mystery is that it's so <laughs> darn hard to find. But that would really give it a bit, bit more weight. I mean, it would probably weigh... Some fishermen have been known to spend <laughs> months... What a terrible clip! He just got mid-sentence Jeremy Wade. We didn't get to hear the start or end of that sentence. It's waiting to catch one of these things in its most frequent spots. Apparently, this fish is so fierce that it's been known to take on a crocodile without any fear. And given their average size is over... How do you know if it had fear when it took on the crocodile? or not did you ask it mr goonch mr goonch mr goonch are you feeling fear right now as you attack this crocodile i guess the freaky sounding name adds up you can look forward to my upcoming story that's book, not a goonch. The goonch stole christmas number one the number i was gonna pause it before i saw it but really how is the most deadly river monster of the amazon the tiny fish that supposedly swam up a dude's dick one time. And it's not even like a real thing that probably actually happened, it's a myth. For humans, the experience is no less painful. Smaller specimens are generally known to, um, insert themselves into a human's urethra, the, um, urinary tube, if that- In mythology, they are known to do that, but even if that was true, don't fucking- how is this, like, seven spots ahead of a caiman? I feel like the caiman was so long ago. How did the Kandiru get this far above the caiman? Whoa.